This is a tutorial to show you how to use the QDA Miner program to analyze your qualitative data. So when you open the program, you go to create a new project, and we want to pick this one, create a project from a list of documents. And here now, we'll navigate to our data, which is probably going to be transcripts from interviews. So there's one of my transcripts, I'll add it, and the other one, add it too. And up here you see what documents are accepted. I find that doc and docx don't always work, so try to stick to the text and RTF files or uh, PDF. So once we're finished adding all our transcripts, hit enter. And now you can save your project. I'm going to call mine Joy Luck Club Project Example and hit save. Now the program has loaded both of my transcripts. There's one and there's the other. Before we start coding, we're going to want to make sure it's edited and all the mistakes are taken care of. So you can use all these different formatting tools to edit your text. If you like to have line numbers, you can do that. Go to Documents, Text View, and View Line Numbers. So once the transcripts are looking good, we're ready to start coding. Now, before opening this program, I've read through my transcripts a few times and I came up with this list of codes that I think are going to be helpful in analyzing my data. So under the category of food, I have three codes. Foods and dishes, food as prosperity, and food as social events. So let's go ahead and add these codes to our program. Go to codes, add, and let's type that in. The first one is going to be foods and dishes, and it's going to go under the broad category food, and let's color it red. We'll add this code. Now the second one is food is prosperity. Also under food, and let's make the color fuchsia. Add that one. And the last one is food as social events. And let's make the color maroon. And that's all the codes I'm going to add for now. Now to begin coding, Say I want to code this entire paragraph as foods and dishes because I'm seeing there's a lot of mentions of food and dishes in this whole paragraph. So I highlight this section, go over to the codes, and double click on foods and dishes. And now that has coded this whole paragraph for me. If you mouse over, you can see the details, when this code was added, what's it about. If you click once, you can see the whole coded section highlighted. And if you click one more time, you can have more options. Remove the coding, add a comment, resize the section, or recode it to a different code. Now this little line about mooncakes, I'm seeing that and I want to code it as food is prosperity. So I've highlighted it now. I'm going to double click food is prosperity. And now it's added this code kind of in a nested way so I can see the broader code and the smaller one over here. So now you see why I decided to make them all reddish colors, because visually you can now see easily that these are all food related codes. I'm going to know that all the food related codes are a reddish color. Okay. Now at this point I've shown you how to code and I'm going to close this one now and skip to a more finished version. So you want to definitely save your project. Now I'm going to open one that's almost done coding. Pick free edition. So here's my project where I've already done quite a bit of coding. You see over here all the codes that I've added. I have two families of codes now. One food, which is all reddish colors, and one superstition, which is all bluish colors. So they've both been added. But I still have a lot of text that is not coded. So to help yourself concentrate on the not coded text, you can go to Documents, Coded Text, and go to dim text. So now the parts that are coded are dimmed and it's going to help me concentrate on reading the parts that are not coded and see if I can assign any codes to those. There are a lot of other options for how to view your coded text actually. You can go to code colors. Now every coded part is colored based on what code it was given. And another option is to hide text. So now I can't see the coded parts at all. I can definitely concentrate on the uncoded parts. Okay, now at this point, I'm thinking 
I know that the color red has a lot to do with prosperity in Chinese culture. So I want to do a search to find all the sentences containing the word red. We can do that. Go to retrieval, text retrieval, and search for text red. And be careful for the search unit. You probably don't want to make a document. You want to make a sentence. And so this is going to turn up every sentence that contains the word red. Run the search. And we have five results. It shows a little preview of the text here. If you want to expand these text previews, hit this icon up here. And it's going to expand the sentences. Suppose I found one sentence that I think definitely should take the code of prosperity, food is prosperity. I can go to this drop down menu, click food is prosperity, and hit the green highlighter, which means code selected hits. And that's going to code this sentence for me. So this is an easy way to view the sentences from your data in a specific way to help you do your coding more efficiently. If you go to this button here, you can display the results using a coding table. And this is useful because it has the same sentences as before, but it says here on the side what codes were already assigned to it. So it's helpful for visualizing it that way. You can also save this chart to a file or print the whole chart. Now I know now I have two transcripts in my project, but suppose I'm going to have a third one later. I might want to run this search for red again. So I can actually save the search so I can run it again. Go over to search expression, hit save query, and hit save. So now in the future, when I open up this project again, if I have new data, I can load this query again. Go to this button, which is load a previously saved query and now I can load that one, the one searching for a sentence containing red, open it again, run the search again on the new data. So that's the text retrieval feature. And another thing you can do under retrieval is coding retrieval. So suppose I am finished coding and I want to see all the codes for good luck signs and bad luck signs. I'll click those two. I can run the search and it shows me all the codes all the sentences that were coded good luck signs and bad luck signs. Again you have the options of printing or saving it, expanding the text, and viewing as a coding table. Uh, but the code retrieval is actually a lot more powerful. You can add conditions. I'll check if and I'm gonna say is near the code of foods. So what this is gonna do it's it's gonna find every time the code bad luck signs or good luck signs is near the code foods and I'm gonna ask for them to be separated by less than one paragraph so this is gonna bring up all the bad luck signs and good luck signs that are within one paragraph distance of the code foods so here's this one result here and I can see what the text was and this is useful if you want to associate codes with one another like I could say this is an example of when um, food is associated with bad luck because I here have it right here the code bad luck signs is near the code foods and dishes and going back to search expression you can do a lot with this instead of doing near you could say equal to so equal to would mean that the same section must be coded bad luck signs and food in order to turn up this way you can say overlapping followed by preceding and you can add a section second condition too like maybe I want to say I want to find bad luck signs and good luck signs that are in the same section as coded food but is also near the section of superstitious rituals so you can add a lot of parameters that way so that's the code retrieval feature and the last feature I want to show you is for after you're done coding, go to Analyze and Coding Frequency. And we can see how often each code turned up. I'm going to search all three of the food-related codes. I want to see how often they turned up, so we'll hit Search. And the chart shows that code Foods and Dishes was coded four times, and in all two cases, 
food is prosperity only showed up in one case and three times. If you want to view this in a graph format, you can do that. It's with this icon here. Uh, but before doing that, you need to select the rows. So it's only going to graph the rows that we select. To select, I'm going to click one. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click the bottom. So that's going to select all of them. And now we'll hit chart selected rows. And we see the distribution of keywords in graph format. And again, you can save this image, print it, and the last one I'm going to do is search codes on frequency or case occurrence. So this is good if you have a lot of codes. I only have six now, but say you wanted to narrow it down. I want to look at all the codes that occur at least three times. No, at least four times. Hit OK. And hit search. Now it's narrowed it down to this code, foods and dishes, because it was the only one that occurred four times or more. So that's good if you have a lot of different codes. Whereas in my case, it's just an example, so it's not so important. And so that's the basics of using the QDA minor program. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.